Well, it's clear that we teach one of the great statements of the Reformation is vocation, vocis, calling, uh, is uh, universal to every Christian. We're called to serve the Lord. We're called to evangelize. We're called to worship. We're ca called to live for the Lord. We're called to work heartily unto the Lord. We're called to make life worship as well as to engage in gathered worship. So we all have callings, and some of us have callings in the church where we're worthy of double honor, that is, the tithe is used to support us to work hard at preaching and teaching. So when I talk to pastors about calling, I, you know, I think Spurgeon was on to something when he said, if there's anything else you can do joyfully in the Lord for the rest of your life, apart from the ministry, then go do it. Don't go in the ministry if you don't really sense, woe be unto me if I do not preach the gospel, that God has actually called me to this ministry. But I'm going to say something a little bit controversial. Don't go into the ministry to be fulfilled. I think those who are called to the ministry have moments of fulfillment, seasons of fulfillment. They also have seasons of absolute devastation, utter discouragement. If you go in the ministry to be fulfilled, I don't think you'll last. Here's what Paul said when he finished his ministry. I have been poured out as a drink offering, not a burn offering. Drink, burn offering, you got ashes left. Drink offering, you've got nothing left. He said, I fought the good fight. I finished the course. Uh, I have laid up for me a crown of righteousness. But this is what he said. He said, Timothy, fulfill your ministry. The church doesn't exist to give me a job as a pastor. I have been called of the Lord to do a job for Jesus in his church and from his church into the world. I'm not in the ministry to be fulfilled. Yes, there are fulfillments in it, but I'm in the ministry to fulfill my calling, the ministry. And it's only by being focused on Christ and the gospel and his grace to fill you that you can stay the course and finish the race and fight the good fight. You're not in it. You're not in it for the fulfillment in this life. You're in it of the wreath and the life to come that he awards in that day. Well done, good and faithful servant. Again, there are moments of fulfillment. I love what I do. But there are many moments I've always asked myself, why in the world are you taking this abuse? Why are you in this? It's because Christ called me. And he didn't call me to be fulfilled he called me to fulfill the ministry. Now, you know, when we talk about pastors, there's all kind of uh, hyphens we have to put beside it, and rightly so. You're a pastor teacher. You're a pastor preacher. You're a pastor evangelist. You're a pastor leader. You're a pastor shepherd. And then you're multiplying teachers and evangelists and preachers and shepherds. And uh, But, you know, you're... you you to some degree embody all of those things. Well, one of them is a pastor scholar. You know, the books that are on my shelf, <laughs> I tell people that almost all of them were written by a guy named John, John Bunyan, John Calvin, John Brown, John Flavel. It's amazing. Jonathan Edwards. It's amazing. The Johns and Jonathans, but they were written by pastors. We have got to reclaim the pastor's study and jettison the pastor's office. Pastors have to lead, but our primary calling is prayer and the Word. Prayer, Word, and sacrament. That means you've got to be a th theologian. Leaders have three elements. They have theological formation, they have uh, character formation, and they have skill formation. Most leadership courses just focus on skills. I know churches where pastors, are, where pastors are extraordinary theologians and extraordinary communicators, but they split and destroy churches. they got a character problem. They're not living their theology. But I also know that my people need a pastor who theologically knows the Word of God to be able to get before them the bigness of God, the glory of God, who now dwells within you by grace. And um, therefore, we and who has to deal with a ever increasing assault of the dying evil empire against the church. How do you do that theologically uh, instead of what's the next program that works? And uh, so I think that's part of um, that's part of the challenge is 
our churches are shallow because our pulpits are shallow. And uh, so you've got to find a way to communicate popularly, but communicate profoundly, theologically. Uh, communicate so everyone can hear, not just PhD Christians, but yet communicate solid theology so that people know how to live life based upon God's Word, not just checking it out and making sure I'm not going against it.